Tim, it's February 25th. It is a special day, though, for you and I. Why is that, in your opinion? Um, look, we've, we've been dating for about 15 years on Fast Money. So That's uh, true. That's it, true. It, um, I, and I, I'm wondering when that first show, is that where you're going with this? Um, no, no, it's not where I'm going no. with this. And I don't want to leave you in. I don't want to leave you hanging. Today is yes. the 200th, 200th episode of Commercial Break. We've, this is the 200th Bang. time we've done Boom. this together. So it's got me thinking. I mean, that, first of all, that, that, that's pretty cool. That's but awesome, by the way. About that, great, great work out there, my man. I mean, two, yeoman got me thinking work. about 200s, 200s. So for me, and I know you know this, 200 represents the Mendoza line. So if you hit above yeah. 200, you're above the Mario <laughs> Mendoza line. And below it, you're below. And it's with the, the irony there, I think, Mario Mendoza for his career was a 215 hitter, which I yeah, find somewhat funny. Yeah, but if you're a 215 funny. hitter, it implies that, that half the time you were below two bucks. And, and you know, the thing about when Mendoza played, and, and this is circa mid-70s right, to, right. you know, maybe a cup of coffee into the 80s. And again, a guy with that kind of batting average was able to hang on in the major leagues if he flashed some leather, you know? I like and, that. And, and I'm, guessing that, I'm guessing that Mario, I think he was a shortstop, and, and, you know, Mark Belanger uh, sure, of, the of some of the some of the greatest baseball teams ever in Baltimore from the mid 60s into the early to mid 70s. Uh, I, you know, I bet I bet Belanger hit, you know, sub Mendoza uh, multiple times in his career and was considered a valuable part of that team. I, well, for one, flashed some pretty good leather and was very light on the stick. You know what I mean? I, right. I, All but, leather, no stick. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's you unfortunate. Know. I mean, but yeah. listen, Belanger, <laughs> you know, he was surrounded by Hall of Famers on that team. He had guys all around him that were going to the Hall of Fame. I mean, Frank Robinson, Brooks Robinson. Uh, you know, I mean, you can I, name the names. I, well, I, I, I could. It would be in Boog Powell. Um, it would be uh, Davey Johnson, sure. Mark Belanger, Brooks Robinson, uh, maybe a Don Buford. Maybe an Al Bumbry, uh, and and I mean a Frank I, Robinson, depending on when you did this, uh, and you know different outfielders out there. But maybe Bumbry was more into the into the eighties, but a Paul Blair. Sure. Uh, so uh, was 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 was, yeah. was there an Andy Etchebaron behind the plate? Andy Etchebaron split time with one Elrod Hendricks, um, sure. who was a catching platoon of which Earl Weaver was kind of famous for, uh, and did that with with. Uh, Rick Dempsey and uh, a little bit of actually John uh, let it be Lowenstein uh, played behind the dish occasionally. He was also an outfielder. Um, so, so, but by the way, we go, we go, Mendoza played for the Bucks. And I have to, I have to rattle off like some of those Bucks teams of Mendoza's time. I mean, think about a Dave Parker in his prime, AKA the Cobra, the Cobra, the Cobra, yeah. the Cobra was a, Badass man, and he was a five tool player, man. Before there was five tool players, um, and he was cool. As, he was a cool cat. Um, and then, of course, you had Pops Stargell, uh, maybe. So, if I'm doing that diamond, I'm going Pop Stargell at first. Uh, I want to go with like a, a Rennie Stennett sure, at, at that's second a nice base. Ball. Um, I'm gonna my shortstop for that team is gonna be shoot, it's not Frank Tavares, heaven must be missing an angel. It's it's before Tavares. Um, oh, I don't know. My third baseman. Uh, it's not Bill Mad Dog because I don't think he was there yet. Um, center field. I'm mixing these teams up because the later teams had Mad Dog. You had an Omar Moreno in center field. You had a Cobra and you had a Bill Robinson um, in left field. All right. So what does 200 mean? Uh, what is the Mendoza line? Let's talk about what the Mendoza line means in today's marketplace well, because it's ugly out there. I it's think ugly. that's a great, I think that's a nice analogy for me, the Mendoza line, and we're not just pulling this out. What's of the thin line? Air. What's the line you can't cross? One and um, a half, before you- one and a half percent in the 10 year yield. And we've talked about that for a while. And you look at it today. I mean, that thing ratcheted through one and a half percent. I think at its peak today, it got up to like 1.56. And again, yeah. it's not necessarily the absolute yield because You'll correctly point out a lot of people, well, that's still, you know, historically low. It's the speed with which we got here. And I think that's what the market's taking its cues off of. Well, it, you're, you're right to bring it up. And as we often say, it's not so much the move itself. It's the velocity of the move. So this has been uh, extraordinary. The other thing we say all the time 
is that the Federal Reserve can control the short end of the curve. They cannot control the long end of the curve and that the market's in control. And the market's clearly in control on this. Um, we know that this is a, a mixed blessing because I, I pointed out that I, I'm not sure you want to see bond yields at 50 basis points, Guy. I mean, that's a Mendoza line I wouldn't want to cross either. Uh, I hear you on the 150. Um, my Mendoza line for rates goes to, I'm going to take you up to 2% actually okay. is my Mendoza. Fitting. Uh, my, my Mendoza is another 200 though. It's below the 200 day uh, moving average on the S&P. And, and I think that's, you know, 30... 400 or so, which is a long way away from here. But but look, we haven't we haven't traded below the hundred day more than a couple times, and, and that's really been you know, very short lived in really the time since we bottomed out in in March, and I think it was March 18th or something mm-hmm. like that in in the bit of the crisis. So um, yet another crisis, I guess COVID. I, because so I, anyway, I, no, but I think you're right. You, you bring up the 200 day moving average in the S&P 500, which coincides with and aligns with that prior all time high. If you go back to last February, when I think the high was 3393 ish before we obviously cratered. So what you're talking about makes a lot of sense. So that 200 day Mendoza moving average line might be right. I'm going to stick by my one and a half percent Mendoza line. And I'm going to actually say to you that you better hope Francisco Lindor, Lindor. chocolate hits above uh, the Mendoza line this year. Because I, I don't you know, know, I get a very funny feeling dude, about this. Stop. Team. Come in, you pl- can you please, please look. Lin- Lindor hit 258 last year, which I was surprised to learn was as low as it was. It was it was not a great year. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. If you listen to this guy talk, he's a leader on the field. He's a leader off the field sure is. um the, 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 by the way the, the last guy that probably had a job uh other than than mark belanger and mario mendoza hitting with just slap and tickle is is i think one fred stanley uh who was the chicken stop for the chicken <laughs> chicken stanley for the for the yankees bro so some really really bad teams in the seventies, I'm sorry, man. Um, Don't they be were sorry. Tough, nah, it's just, you you know, you, I was, I was waiting for you to throw a Gene Stick Michael at me Stick because Michael. he's the Belanger. You know, he's the Yankees Belanger. Yeah, yeah. No, every every team had one. Um, well, look, I, I know we don't have a ton of time to be talking here. I, I do think just back to the market. Um, you have a unique set of circumstances. Rates that were uh, even by the standards of Fed induced overshoot to the downside on rates but then covid look we're we're, we're barreling into reopening and, and i'm sorry we were at 160 on the 10 year on the way down i'm not telling you that the world was a great place then um but but and i know this move is uncomfortable but i i think you're gonna layer in you know your your buddy fritz the cat morris the cat sylvester the cat kitty carlisle hello kitty good night kitty kid and play jason kid billy the kid i don't know what you got but this reddit stuff is ridiculous. And I think that has something to do with what's going on today, too. And I think we'll get out of here. You mentioned Fritz. We'll talk about Fritz Peterson and Mike Kekich tomorrow. But right now, Tim, we got to get out of here. I'll leave you with one. Um, Felix the Cat was a very children's friendly cartoon. Fritz the Cat was not. Don't watch that. See you tomorrow.